what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of BS for Build. In this episode, we're gonna be focused on the 2JZ BRZ swap with the end goal of trying to get the engine to turn on and run and run for a long period of time. So before we've got it to turn on and run a little bit, but we've never actually like got it to fully run for a long period of time. So we're gonna be kind of jumping around from place to place, but everything we do is gonna be all supporting that concept of we're trying to get this engine to run idle correctly. That's, that's my goal, get it to idle correctly. Stay tuned. I've decided to start working on the fuel pump first. So what we need to do is go ahead and unplug that fuel line right there and the wiring right there and go ahead and wiggle that thing free, pull the basket out of there and we're gonna bring it over to the bench to start modifying it. All right, got the fuel pump out of the car, the whole basket connection thing. So I'm gonna spend the next few minutes fiddling with this, figuring out how to get the stock fuel pump out of there. And this is the replacement, it's a Walbro 450 liter per hour fuel pump. So that's actually bigger than the one we put in the V8 twin turbo Mustang uh, is going into this baby. So it should be uh, capable of pushing us past 500 wheel horsepower if we manage to get there somehow. Um, we'll have to add another one if we wanna go any higher than that. But for now, for the first phase of this build, that's gonna be good enough. So I just have to figure out how to take this basket apart and, uh, and, and, and get the fuel pump out. And then we're also going to be uh, building our drain so the fuel can come back into the basket. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. So <laughs> here's the problem. Well, here's the breakdown. This is the uh, filter that goes on the very bottom. This is the basket right here. Fuel goes in there and stuff like that. This is the holder mabobber for the fuel pump. Uh, this is the old fuel pump. This is the new fuel pump. Welcome, meet the family. So uh, here's the way that this works. That little hole with that O-ring right there, fuel comes out of the fuel pump right here, blasts into that O-ring, goes into this little cylindrical thingy, my bobber down here. And then what we have is, this is the line that goes out to the car. So that's essentially what goes to our engine. This is the Venturi system that vacuums uh, fuel from that line right there that is in the other fuel tank. And then this is the fuel pressure regulator. And that is what we need to bypass. The BRZ has its own fuel pressure regulator. I don't want the, the did I say BRZ? 2JZ has its own fuel pressure regulator. I don't want to have two of them fighting with each other. I want this one to not exist. I can pull this out, but then I just don't, I don't know what happens if I pull that out. I don't know how to make this be dead, but not be gone. So it's time to do some research. I'll be back when I get this figured out. Well, it's an entire day later. It's more than a day later, but I got, I think I have everything that I need. So the long, I'll try and make the long story short. Um, I talked to my buddy Kyle Chansey who has done one of these before. He's the one that has a 2JZ swapped BRZ. I'll put a link to his Instagram in the description. Uh, he taught me about what I need to do. We basically need to run our return line into the Venturi system that is right here. I misspoke earlier when I said it was over there. It's actually right there. That piece just leads to that piece. That's why I was confused. That's the Venturi system. Return line needs to go into there. I had a viewer a long time ago send me this piece right here and I was planning on using that to go from our return line through the top hat, which is right here. So basically we have to drill a hole in that thing and go through there. Uh, his name is Josh Cody. Thank you so much for sending me that and um, this little elbow and this barb thing. And um, again, link in the description to some of his stuff. But what I needed to do then is once I got through the top head, I needed to run a hose off of this into this. And that's where I got in trouble. I ran all around the different automotive parts stores, hardware stores, plumbing stores, everything trying to figure out how I could make that happen. Uh, trying rebuilding this out of brass and other things like that. Didn't work, so I ended up going with the AN fittings uh, and I went to Baxter Auto Parts, made a mistake, trusted them. They overnighted the part, got it delivered, and then they lost it. So then, yeah, now it's the next day and it's like 3 p.m. the next day and I finally just now got the part. So that's a bummer. Uh, we're a little bit behind schedule and I do apologize if I don't get enough stuff in this video, but I'm doing what I can. So now uh, we have our pumps right here. This is our return line right here. We know where it needs to go into right there. I got a little bit of hose for both sides. I think we are good to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this baby into time lapse and figure out this whole fuel pump assembly system right now.
Well, that took long enough and we clearly had to get creative with some of the hosing because um, it got hosed, but uh, that's it. So basically down here you got the fuel pump. It's nice and secure in there. It really isn't moving. Uh, then you have the, uh, this is the return line. Runs in here, spins around through here, and then comes into the Venturi right here, which will then suck up other fuels from the other can right there and put it back into the basket uh, right here. And then this is coming out of the pump. That's the feed line. It has to run outside because like we have one line here and one line right here. So rather than, I wish we could go straight up, but I really don't want to waste any more time going and finding fittings. Um, so as long as there's room in the fuel tank, this should be fine. Um, and I think there is plenty of room. So this like this hose will just, you know, kind of naturally sit like that. So that's the game plan. I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the car and let's see if it fits. Big sigh. It did not work. Um, this needs to be shorter. We can't make it shorter because the top of the fuel pump is hitting the top of here. Uh, and we need room for this cable to come out. Not cable, sorry, hose. So when you look at this one though, you can see that this other style of hosing um, can bend at much more sharp angles. And I think that's what we need here to make this to make this guy work. So I might be able to use some of this. I don't think so. I don't think it'll ever connect onto that stuff and go back. If I can get it off of there, I don't think it'll go back onto here, right? But um, that's a junk fuel pump, so I can use those for parts. Uh, I'll call the auto parts store. I gotta do my best. I'm gonna take this thing apart one more time and try and fix it. Much, much better. That's that's the new package. It can compress down now without bending any hoses. So we should be good to go. Once again, install it on the car. There it is, it's installed. Will it work? I got no idea. To do that, we're gonna have to work with some of the wiring. So let's go ahead and do that next. Let's jump over to the front of the car and finish up our wiring. Massive wires update. We're about halfway there. We've got all the ECU wiring running across in one nice little neat cable. We've got our fuse block here. This is all our fuse power connections. Uh, people mentioned that we didn't have enough fuses. We've remedied that problem. We're all fused up. I gotta get something similar for the ground figured out. Might do a temporary fix until I can buy another distribution block. Uh, the goal right now is we need to uh, basically get this thing rewired the way that we had it back when we did our original wiring and uh, hit the button, give it a start, make sure it starts back up before we continue on with our full-on modifications that we're going to do because, uh, yeah, it, we, we need to make sure it starts before we continue on. So that's the game plan. I'm just going to get it back to where we had it before and make it start. Okay, we're all wired up, and we, this is not the final wiring. Uh, I would like to clean it up a lot more than this, but I got some work I'm gonna do on the ECU in a minute here, so this is kind of what it looks like. Basically, we got the crossover wire, we got the fuse block installed, and we got all this stuff wired back up. And I got fuel. Fuel pump seems to be, sounds like it's running good, but unfortunately, I forgot to wire up the fuel lines back into the engine since we took the engine out. So this is the feed line, this is the return line, and I forgot to hook them up. So I started spraying fuel all over the ground. So we have a nice gas puddle here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook those back up and then try and start the car. All right, so far so good. Uh, I turned it on, I listened to the fuel system running a little bit and it's making some strange-ish sounds. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull that whole fuel pump basket back out and just inspect everything. Since everything that we did was kind of custom, I just wanna inspect everything, make sure all the hoses are still on there, happy, everything looks like it's in the right spot. And then if everything's good, we'll reinstall it and go for the startup. All right, fuel pump looks okay visually. Sounds funny, but that's probably just the sound it's gonna make. Sometimes there's little air bubbles that are working their way out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and kick it on, see if it'll start, and then we can start like making the improvements to make it run more longer term. Awesome! Sweet. 
Start it right up. Let's get the radiator on there. Let's get that thing full of fluid, fuel, what, what, water. Water goes in a radiator. Um, and then we will start doing the air intake, mass airflow sensor, and looking at other things that we need to do uh, to make it run much longer. All right, we're getting close to our test of can this thing run on its own for a long period of time? Can it basically hang out and idle? Uh, let's see, we got fluid in the radiator so the cooling system is not going to be too upset. We have a ton of vacuum leaks everywhere, I know that, but we did put the MAF on, so the MAF is installed there, and I linked the two heater hoses together. That's temporary, I would like to plumb them into the BRZ, I hope to have that done someday. Uh, but for right now, they're just linked together. I don't think that will be a big problem, I'm not sure. I'm pretty positive it's okay. So that's about it. I think that's all that I did. We're ready to go ahead and crank it over and give it a try. It's not wanting to stay on. If I, if I feather the throttle a little bit, it's doing better, but it really doesn't want to stay on. It might be one too many vacuum leaks. All plugged up, kind of. I, I use duct tape on these. I don't know if that stuff's even airtight, but I don't have any big, big plugs. Obviously we need to find a long-term solution for that stuff, so I guess I'll be, I don't know, looking around online or something. Um, but I've heard from people that when these things do not run or idle very well at all when they have uh, vacuum leaks of any kind, so uh, there's obviously massive ones. So I did that one, that one, that one, that one that one and that one only six right off the top and then we kind of like there's a tiny one right here and uh yeah so anyways um give it another shot is pretty damn cool. That is goal number one for the day, checked off the list. Next goal is a little bit more uh, advantageous, I will say. I have a cheap Android tablet, a OBD2 port pigtail connector, and a OBD2 Bluetooth connection. I want to try and hook all these things up to our 2JZ ECU, start the car up, and be able to use this as a dash gauge pod thing. So that's what I really wanted to get to, and uh, let's see if we can figure it out. If I can, it'll be like a $50 dashboard, which would be sweet. All right, so I should say when I started this, I'm not following a tutorial. I don't know of anybody that's actually done this before. I haven't had time to hit up any of my buddies. This is just something that I thought of doing, and I saw in the pinout diagram that one of these, uh, to be exact, it's the F60 plug pin 11. Wire 11 is an output wire that's meant to go to an OBD2. This car didn't come with OBD2. OBD2 wasn't even invented until after this engine was made, as far as I know. Uh, but regardless of that, we're going to try and wire it up. So if you're trying to follow along at home, the place that I'm starting, plug F60, pin 11, I'm going to go ahead and wire that into my ECU. No, sorry, my OBD2 plug, uh, the power to the rest of the power. Basically wire up a, uh, an OBD2 plug into this and then start troubleshooting and try and figure out how to connect that to the Bluetooth and then connect the Bluetooth to the tablet. Dude, you guys, I'm nerding out so hard right now. This is awesome. Okay, so here's what I had to do. I, um, inside the, uh, information the big printout that I I, I did it thorough in-depth how to wire one of these up episode in there I put a link I'll put it again into a pinout diagram for the ECU the ECU said that um, this pin uh, on plug 60 pin 11 was the output for the OBD2 so then I put that into our OBD2 uh, pigtail and then you need to put that into pin seven on the OBD2 so each OBD2 has a pinout for there's like I don't know 16 pins on an OBD2 Pin seven 
is the type of, it's the pin for the type of communication that this ECU does. So uh, I matched that up by just the PDF that I was reading said it was this like 19441 type of communication and pin seven is the one that communicates with that on the thing. Then I plugged it into my Bluetooth. Now my Bluetooth then goes to the tablet and then inside the tablet, uh, I'm running Torque, which is an app that a lot of you guys, most cards, you can just plug in a Bluetooth adapter like this and then run Torque to get these types of information. But you probably already have those in your dashboard. Anyway, so then you run Torque, then you have to go into the deep, deep down vehicle profile settings and you have to put in basically a string that helps Torque decode the signal coming from the ECU. Plug that in, in your, in your profile. I will put this in the description if anybody wants to do this. This is so cool. You plug that in, give it some time, it'll reset itself, and here you are. So what this has right now is it's telling me my coolant, uh, vacuum, speed's not gonna work. Uh, acceleration is based on how the tablet's going. Uh, revs, throttle, um, revs, I don't know. We might be able to get more. I just literally got this going, but to, to show you that it's working, so uh, watch throttle right here. It's at 15.3, I'm gonna pull the throttle cable. And now it's at like 57. Let it go, it's at 15.3. How cool is that? I'm so excited. So let's jump inside the car, turn it on, and see if we can get revs to show on this thing. That would be so cool. Okay, here we are inside the car. I haven't started it up yet. And here's our little torque panel. Now let's turn this thing on and see if the revs work. This is what would really, I mean, it'd be so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. There's our revs right there. The engine's not super happy, but uh, there we go. This is, gets me all, I don't know what else this, this thing has to offer, but this gets me all the uh, little niceties of, well, it gets me my dashboard back for 60 bucks. I can tell my coolant now, I can tell my revs. The speedometer will work on the BRZ because that's based on the rear wheels, so I'm pretty much set up now. All I need is my, um, air fuel ratio and my boost. Damn, this is awesome. Oh man, that was so damn cool. I, you guys know gauges cost a lot of money. I don't wanna have to install a million of them. That thing I checked later on, it's configurable. Basically anything that you can data log on a vehicle, you can bring up a gauge for and put it on there. So that is gonna be like my secondary gauge cluster. I'm gonna run a couple of just hard, hard wired gauges like a airflow sensor, uh, like a wideband O2 sensor, I mean, and a um, and the boost gauge, um, and uh, so I have variable boost adjustment as well. But for everything else, I'm going with that. It's got my RPMs, it's got my water temperatures on there, uh, lots of good stuff. Coolant temps, I mean, not water, but whatever. You guys get the idea. I'm so stoked that that worked out. So if you have an engine swap car, your dashboard is dead or whatever. It, you can install an OBD2 port, or if you already have one, then just plug in a Bluetooth adapter, download Torque. I picked up an Android tablet. There are similar apps out there for iOS. I picked up an Android tablet just because they're so much cheaper. That all in all, the, the Bluetooth adapter and the tablet cost me 60 bucks. That's a great DIY little hack to have a whole customizable dashboard for very cheap. Or I think a race pack costs at least 10 times more than that. So. Uh, awesome. And that's where I'm going to leave this episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys like it. If you like Beast for Build and you want to help out and support, head over to beastforbuild.com. Scroll down to the shop. Pick yourself up a hat or a shirt or a key tag. All of that goes towards supporting the builds. All the proceeds of that go towards supporting these builds uh, behind me. And uh, if you want to find us in more places, we're at Beast for Build on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that great stuff. Thanks for following us on there. I dropped a little bit of behind the scenes stuff recently and uh, some hints at some new parts that are coming for this car very, very soon. That's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.